There is perhaps no mythical creature more formidable than the mighty dragon. Valiant individuals have tried besting these beasts in all sorts of ways for centuries. But what if you had to fight a dragon? How would you win? Let's get technical. Dragons must be one of the few truly universal monsters. From the story of St. George to Game of Thrones, dragons have appeared in almost every culture's stories going back thousands of years. So if we're actually gonna fight one of these things, we should start with a definition. First of all, not all dragon-looking creatures are considered true dragons. Traditionally depicted, dragons have four limbs and then two wings, while your standard Hobbit or Skyrim or Game of Thrones dragon is better described as a wyvern with two legs and then two winged forelimbs. Pedantics aside though, if either of these was a real creature, it would definitely be dangerous. If you think of a dragon, like a flying Tyrannosaurus Rex, as I like to do, it could be 40 feet long and require 40,000 calories per day in flame broiled nutrition. It would only have to eat half a person to get that. Hmm. And if we use T-Rex proportions, a real dragon based on wing scaling relationships might have a tremendous wingspan too, like 210 feet wide, as wide as a Boeing 747, and wings are our first target. A dragon is a Swiss army knife of dangerous, a powerful tail for whipping, teeth and claws for hero dismemberment, and of course, fire breath for Darth Vadering prey. But as Obi-Wan Kenobi would tell you, once an opponent has the high ground, <laughs> it's over. So a dragon's wings might be its biggest advantage. Hello there. Now, despite what you may have seen on a show like Game of Thrones, it is likely much harder to hit a dragon mid-flight than you think. So our first battle tactic is to fight a dragon in a place that eliminates its air advantage so it can't take off and have the high ground, a place like its underground lair. Oh, and I should say that for these specific sciency battle tactics, we are again turning to the help of Dr. John R. Hutchinson, an evolutionary biomechanist and now seasoned monster battler. He has expertise in how giant ancient creatures actually moved and how they might have acted. Dr. John has helped us on this program before fight Velociraptor and T-Rex. So here, his input is going to be absolutely vital. If we lost him, if we didn't have it, well, at least I, I wrote it all down. To the dragon's lair, oh no. Inside an enclosed space like this, a dragon might not be able to take off, but you'd still be facing down in effect a 40 foot long sentient flamethrower. So our next tactic is stealth. We're not gonna just come in here to the dragon's lair and act like some ye olde knight and stand up and say, have at thee, dragonage, your mere presence here has besmirched the good name of your lord master. We're not gonna do that, that would be dumb. We're, we're definitely not gonna do that. We are instead gonna go for the quickest, stealthiest takedown possible, avoiding the most dangerous dragon bits wherever possible. <laughs> nice. Needless to say though, given this animal's potential arsenal, we're not gonna make it very far against it if we don't bring some weaponry of our own. And armed with a cutting tool like this, we are gonna take a dragon by surprise. <laughs> oh, oh. And I know what you may be thinking at this point. Why don't we use missiles or explosives or a high-powered armor-piercing sniper rifle or something? Well, those aren't exactly ensconced in dragon lore, are they? And we don't wanna give away our position if we miss, and the classic sword and shield route is frankly just more interesting to me. Oh, you better believe I'm right here staring at you. Without the help of magical plot devices, we're gonna have to make our best assumptions about dragon biology and exploit them. Where do you attack a dragon? Well, in many pop culture representations, the correct answer would be either go for the throat or the soft, soft underbelly. In Game of Thrones and Reign of Fire, a critical attack to one of these areas can even cause a fuel-filled dragon to literally explode. But I wouldn't suggest this method of disposal because chemistry. 
For example, if a dragon was filled with a flammable gas like methane, it might be potentially explosive, but not by itself. According to the concept called stoichiometry, which calculates the relative amounts of reactants and products needed for a complete reaction, methane will not explode on its own. It needs a very specific mixture to get things lit, as the kids say. Ah! I thought that joke was pretty good. Have you no sense of humor, Draconid? The conclusion is the same for other flammable gases and liquids, but for the combustion of methane, for every one part of methane that you have reacting, you need two parts of oxygen. And so just like how your stove doesn't just explode every time you light the burners, and like how a propane tank won't explode if you shoot it with a pistol, without a significant amount of oxygen in the dragon system, whatever it is using to shoot fire breath, a direct hit to that critical system is unlikely to cause any actual explodey damage. The only thing that's gonna blow up is your spot. Okay, if we're not gonna take that tactic, where do we attack a dragon? Well, we know where we don't want to attack. You don't want to attack a dragon either head on or tail on because then you'd be stumbling right inside its draconic weaponry envelope, as Dr. Hutchinson puts it. RIP. We want to stay outside of the potential attack radius that the claws, teeth, and tail for this animal have. And of course, we want to stay away from the fire. And so we will be exercising our heroics right here at the flanks of the great beast. Now we just have to find a weakness there. If dragon biology really is anything like giant dinosaur biology, then there might even be a better place to strike than the soft underbelly. So we have our dragon cornered and we've stealthily closed the distance inside of an underground lair. Now where do we attack these giant scaly flanks? Well, armed with a traditional dragon destroyer, Dr. Hutchinson had a suggestion. He was, he was a good man. We are going to be swinging our swords at the caudofemoralis longus muscle, or CFL for short, seen recreated here on a T-Rex skeleton in one of Dr. Hutchinson's very own papers. Attaching half of the tail to the back of the femur, the largest CFLs in the animal kingdom that we've ever known about are the largest limb muscles to exist on any land animal, period. And they help to maintain an animal's stance, help bear its weight, and they help to propel an animal forward as it walks. Walks. Cutting a dragon's CFL will seriously hamper its mobility and reduce the danger from its swinging tail at least a bit. But before we strike, we should turn to chemistry once more. A single sword strike will not ensure your victory, valiant knight, but envenomating your blade might. Why am I rhyming? Pick up any tome of learned knowledge on toxins and at some point you will come across this symbol, LD50, and it stands for the dose that will be completely lethal for 50% of the organisms affected by it. By this metric, the deadliest substance on Earth is actually a form of Botox, the stuff that people inject in their face, so-called botulinum toxin. It's estimated median lethal dose is just one billionth of a gram per kilogram of body weight of some organism. This chemical prevents an organism's nerves from signaling properly, leading to widespread paralysis and eventual death. We are going to coat our dragon destroyer in about six micrograms of botulinum toxin to ensure that our single dragon strike will ring true, because a single strike is probably all we're gonna get. Let's go. Stealth. Stealthily. Nope, this is a mistake. This is a mistake. What are you doing? What are you, why? Just for subs? This isn't some equation. It's a dragon. You're, you're, you're dead. I'm dead. I'm gonna die. Okay, time to defeat a dragon. We have our toxic blade to ensure the beast's demise. We take aim at its CFL to partially disable it while the venom takes hold, and then we strike and then we run away because discretion is a better part of valor! If we're lucky, soon our chemistry and biology approved attack will lead to victory. But as Dr. Hutchinson pointed out, if a dragon is perhaps cold blooded, then its metabolism will actually take longer to move our toxin from teeth to tail. And if that's the case, then our final tactic is to play a, a deadly game of hide and seek and just wait it out. I'm so brave right now. 
Assuming dragon biology is anything like giant reptilian biology that we understand today, eventually, our dragon fighting tactics, eliminating and or avoiding everything that makes a dragon dangerous, will lead to victory. The disabled, diseased dragon will meet its doom. But of course, this is the best possible scenario for us. A dragon could feasibly have scales so thick they were impenetrable or senses so good that we could never sneak up on it. In reality, facing down a dragon toe to claw would probably be the last thing that you ever did. But if you had to fight a dragon, I'd side with the science. Because science, oh, I didn't wait long enough. Oh, my tactics have failed me. Yeah, I'm fine by the way. If you did have something more modern and I didn't want to use it because it's not as fun, like a high powered sniper rifle, you would want to take a different tactic and aim for the dragon's eye or the base of the brain. Basically, you're trying to eliminate the functionality of the draconic weaponry envelope as quickly as you could. And you know, hey, it works for zombies, works for dragons, works for anything mythical. And you can quote me on that. Thank you so much for watching, Jordan, and thank you again to Dr. John R. Hutchinson, who's fine, by the way, for his extensive help on this episode. If you like this episode, you'll probably like some of our related topics like how to fight a Tyrannosaurus Rex and how to fight a Velociraptor. If you want to connect with us or suggest ideas for future episodes, you can hit us up at these social media handles here. Thanks.